All right. Um, hello and good afternoon. Um, how's everyone doing today? So, welcome to my video. Um, you're probably watching this because you might have a fungus gnat or a fruit fly infestation around your house plant or even an outdoor plant for that matter. Uh, now, in this video, um, since I do have some time on my hands today, woohoo, I'm going to show you how to entirely get rid of an infestation once and for all. So you may have been searching all over YouTube or other sites uh, for a straightforward answer regarding how to deal with an infestation issue and I am very confident that I can help. Um, there is a lot of information out there and some of it is pretty unclear when it comes to flies or other insects that have decided to occupy your houseplant and even your residence as they do often multiply by the hundreds. Um, so I'm going to show you the best way to get rid of these insects using my experience with fungus gnats in particular. Um, this video should cover everything. Um, I know it's kind of long, uh, but please be patient. There are a few steps that you have to follow in order, but I assure you, um, you will see results in the end. Uh, no BS. So, okay, so let's begin. Okay, now in my case, a few months back, I decided to buy a house plant, uh, which is this one right here. Um, I got this beautiful ficus that you see uh, right here to decorate my office space with it and it really looks nice um, until I realized that it was attracting a lot of fungus gnats. Now a fungus gnat is a tiny fly, it's almost, uh, it's very similar to like a small mosquito um, and they multiply like crazy. Uh, one female fungus gnat can lay over 100 eggs and typically has a two week lifespan. So okay, that's a ton of eggs. Um, so once the legs are, aid with, are laid, uh, within hours they hatch into larvae or little worm-like creatures and then they transition into flies over a period of a few days. So I'm just sitting in my office one day um, and I notice all of these little flies buzzing around me um, and they really are annoying. I mean really, really annoying. Um, they're attracted to carbon dioxide uh, so they'll end up trying to enter your nose, mouth, and ears if possible. Um, these flies will not harm you even if they are if, even if there are like a million of them. Um, there is nothing to panic about. Um, however, if you just allow them to keep multiplying, um, then it is very likely that the larvae, which live in your house plant's pot, um, usually on the topsoil, uh, feeding off of organic matter and such, uh, will spread and will also feed on your plant's root system. Um, this type of parasitic behavior can kill your plant eventually. Um, so please be aware of that. Um, at first, I decided to try trapping and killing the fungus gnats uh, through a container filled with apple cider vinegar, and this did work for a temporary period of time, uh, but it was not a permanent fix. Um, yes, the apple cider vinegar did help, uh, but it, I didn't even know that fungus gnats lay eggs um, and that they most likely use my houseplant as a breeding ground for their young. Um, little did I know that you can't just target these flies with vinegar, but you have to go after the entire family, so to speak. So larvae and flies included have to be destroyed. Um, so this is the best solution that I have discovered for a fungus gnat infestation. Uh, but please be advised that you can also use this solution for just about any insect infestation involving a plant. Um, so there are five steps involved in this process. Um, I'm going to explain all of these steps in order. Um, so, and I suggest that they be followed in this order. Um, so this is very important to keep in mind. So it's a, it's a process. So step number one. For step number one, you're going to want to medicate you're going to want to medicate your house plant with a 50-50 solution of hydrogen peroxide and water. Okay, hydrogen peroxide looks like this. Okay, it's a 3% hydrogen peroxide that you can buy at really any drugstore. Um, and most people have them, so, but if you don't have any, um, it's very cheap and costs about two bucks. Um, then you're going to want to find a clean spray bottle. Okay, you're going to find a clean spray bottle like this one, and fill it with six ounces of water, okay? Then you're going to want to fill the same spray bottle with six ounces of hydrogen peroxide, okay? So you should then have approximately one and a half cups of, hyd of a hydrogen peroxide and water mixture at hand, 50% hydrogen peroxide and 50% water. So take that bottle and spray the mixture onto the topsoil of your houseplant. Uh, be sure to apply a generous amount 
the hydrogen peroxide will not harm your houseplant and in fact it's a it's chemically similar to water and can act as a medicine for your plant if used accordingly next you'll notice that the soil in which you just sprayed this mixture onto will start to kind of fizz like an open can of soda and this is very normal so don't be alarmed so now you're going to wait for approximately one hour and then reapply another coat of the hydrogen peroxide and water mixture onto the surface of the houseplant soil. Uh, once again, just like the last time, the hydrogen peroxide will start to make the soil fizz. You only need to do two applications of this mixture to the soil and then wait approximately one hour for it to work prior to moving on to step number two. So, when, so once you apply that mixture, for step two you're going to need to buy this product. Okay, this one right here. So you're going to want to, it's called a Garden Safe brand insect killer. Okay, and just as a disclaimer, just as a disclaimer, I am not paid to endorse this product at all. However, it is an effective insecticide, and in the case of the fungus gnat, um, I was able to kill off all of the larvae in my houseplant's pot. Um, it says here that it quote unquote kills on contact. Uh, which is a false statement. Um, it will not kill these insects on contact, but will poison them to the point uh, where they will perish within a few hours. So this product costs about $6, and you can find it at any Lowe's Home Improvement store. So your local garden supply store will very likely carry this product, or at least something similar to it. Um, or you can just buy it online, it's up to you. But whatever the case, uh, this product is a must. It's very, very good. Now, once you have acquired the insecticide, you should spray a generous amount of it onto the topsoil of your house plant's pot, just like you did with the hydrogen peroxide water mixture an hour before. Um, now, after you have finished spraying, you should then wait approximately one hour for this product to be absorbed and cycled throughout your house plant soil. So now, the reason why I'm making you wait in one hour intervals between each spray of the topsoil is because it ensures a much more effective killing of all insects. So you want to attack these insects using multiple organic chemical products, but over a period of time where you allow them to do their job. So don't be hasty. Um, so an infestation does not happen overnight, therefore a permanent solution in getting rid of such insects uh, will not be quick either. It takes time, please remember that. So after you have applied a second coat of Garden Safe Insect Killer, you are done for the day. Okay, leave your plant alone for approximately 48 hours. Once 48 hours has passed, you are now ready for step number three. For step three, you will need to buy this product. Okay, it's called, let me just zoom in on that, Neem Cake. Right there, Neem Cake, N-E-E-M, Cake. Okay, now... Neem cake is basically a fertilizer and organic insecticide uh, that's very common in the country of India where it originates from. Now, I was able to buy two and a half pounds of this stuff through an online vendor for about $15. And it was actually, um, that was the cheapest price that I could find it for. So, neem cake is very different from neem oil extract, which you may have, may have heard of. Um, neem cake is produced by compacting freshly cut neem herbs with soil to create an earthy substance that is commonly used to fertilize land and get rid of pests for industrial sized farming purposes. So, neem oil, on the other hand, is an alcohol-based extract of neem. It's usually ineffective uh, because in its liquid form, it tends to it tends to evaporate quickly when applied. So the point is, don't buy neem oil. It will not work as well as neem cake. I guarantee that. Neem oil is a lot more available than neem cake. Um, and it is also cheaper, but trust me on this one. So the neem, the neem oil is no competition for the high concentration and soil composition of the cake variety. <laughs> so regardless, um, you're going to apply the neem cake onto the surface, okay, onto the surface of your houseplant soil. But prior to doing this, you should look into your pot just to make sure that the hydrogen peroxide and insecticide combo that you applied two days prior actually worked. So you should see no observable trace of insects in your pot. In my case, two days later, I was unable to find any fungus gnat larva crawling around my plant. Okay, just good news. Um, that's how I knew that steps one and two of the treatment process worked. 
And essentially all the fungus snap babies, if you want to call them that, were destroyed, as they should be, okay? So when ready, apply about a half an inch of neem cake onto the surface of your pot soil. And once completed, you may now move on to step four. So I've already applied that, okay? I've, I've completed the process, as you can see. And for step four, you will need to buy some aquarium gravel. And you can kind of tell I have some aquarium gravel right here. Um, in the case of a house plant, I recommend either black or brown colored aquarium gravel. Um, just make sure you have enough to cover, to cover the surface of the pot. I find that five pounds of aquarium gravel works just fine and gives me enough to cover the neem cake that I have just laid down over the bare soil. In my case, I actually got creative and combined light colored and black colored gravel together and then applied it over the layer of neem cake. You can buy aquarium gravel really anywhere. Uh, most stores will sell you five pounds of aquarium gravel for around five dollars. Um, it's really, really cheap. Um, and you're probably asking yourself why you should even bother putting down aquarium gravel. Well, the reason might actually surprise you. Um, you see, having neem cake alone at the surface of the pot is not a good idea as this substance has a very strong smell. And I can actually smell it right now, guys. Um, neem cake smells a lot like coffee and wet soil um, that's been mixed together. Um, and it's, it's a very unusual smell, but you will notice it unless you apply a layer of gravel onto the surface of your pot so that the smell is contained, at least partially. So also, I think that adding a layer of gravel will create an extra barrier that will prevent any insects from coming back and laying eggs into your soil again. So it's kind of like a safety measure that deters insects from returning, to the f from returning in the future, but also keeps the strong scent of the neem cake at bay. And as you can see, I've already completed the treatment process. Um, with my ficus and it looks extraordinary. Um, since I have applied the hydrogen peroxide, insecticide, um, neem cake layer and gravel layer on top of the soil surface because it's a layered process. So neem cake and then gravel. Obviously you treat the soil, then you apply the neem cake and then you apply the gravel in that order. Um, I've actually seen my plant grow. Okay. It's grown about two inches, um, and there was no damage done to it. The treatment really worked, and the flies were killed off and prevented entirely from repopulating the space. Okay. Now, moving on to the final step, uh, which is considered optional, but I highly recommend doing it as it will only benefit your plant in the end. Now, for step five, I just took the liberty of buying a sticky trap okay, and hung it right next to my ficus. Okay, so typically after you have followed all the first four steps, uh, some insects, um, especially thayer flies, might still be alive. Just hang one of these traps nearby and any of the remaining insects will be caught in the sticky trap and killed so that they don't bother you again. So in terms of a sticky trap, I can show you what I did. I just took this sticky trap right here, as you can tell. So that's the sticky trap that I used. Um, it's kind of a... It's, it's linear, kind of circular, um, and uh, you just open it up and hang it right next to your plant, and it really does a good job. I don't know if you can tell, but I have um, a lot of these little gnats, fungus gnats, kind of stuck to this trap, and it really works. It does an excellent job of collecting any of the residual uh, fungus gnats or whatever insect that you're having an issue with um, right after you have treated your plant. Um, it's amazing, really. I mean, I put, I hung this stuff next to my plant. This is the second one that I use. I actually replaced the first one because there were so many of those gnats um, on the sticky trap. They were like, it was covered, okay? Like, you couldn't even see any yellow. You know, this stuff is yellow, as you can tell. It's like golden amber color. It was all black from from at least 500 of these little gnats, okay? Because they, they just po repopulate the area so fast. It's just, you can't control them unless... You, you treat the soil of your house plant first, you know, so you have to, you know, kill it at its source and the source is the soil. Um, I usually find this, um, a lot of these gnats are, um, they tend to prefer organic soil. So I bought, for my ficus, I bought very organic soil and um, that's what they love. You know, they, they love organic soil that where they can um, lay their eggs and um, soil that's conducive to the larva that they um that they want to grow into flies eventually so it's just it's it, it attracts them and 
So within 10 days after this process is complete, you should see no more insects in or around your house plant ever again. Um, and in total, uh, the cost of all the items um, that you have seen in this video um, uh, and that you need for this treatment, including the sticky, trap, sticky fly trap that I have shown uh, you here, will be approximately $30. <clears throat> Excuse me. Again, half of the cost will be for the neem cake alone. Um, which I highly recommend that you buy even though it is 15 bucks. Uh, you will not regret it. Adding the neem cake really did work for me and I think it will work for you as well. So it's a, um, it's, it's a natural pesticide. Uh, it will not kill your plant or harm it in any way. Um, and more importantly, it's a fertilizer. In fact, if anything, the neem cake um, strengthens your plant and will probably benefit it. Well, will definitely benefit it um, in the long run. Um, so there you go guys. Uh, please let me know in the comment section what you think of my process and whether it helped you out. Um, trust me, your plants will be forever grateful. Um, and thank you. Thank you for visiting and good luck.